everybody! Welcome to the Jade and Stitches show. I get so many requests here on the show to do video game related crochet projects. Especially lately I've had lots of requests to make Pokemon stuff, I've had requests to do poke Pokemon blankets and appliques. Anyway, I took all of your ideas and I rolled them into one really cool project and I came up with something I think is pretty cool. I have created a Pokeball Granny Square! <laughs> And I love it so much, I actually wound up making an entire blanket. <laughs> this is really quick, really easy, and in fact, you don't even have to make the whole granny square if you don't want to. Let's say you've already got a blanket on the go, I can show you how to make this into an applique. So it's like a two-in-one video. You guys are in for such a treat. Anyway, I'm going to show you guys how to make this awesome square today, and I'll even show you how to lay it out, and we've even got pattern videos on how to add borders, how to put them together. Um, I'm going to go through all of that in today's show. So, grab your hooks, grab your yarn, grab your favorite background colors. You can make this to match a, 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 back, a backyard. You can make it to match a bedroom <laughs> or somebody's favorite colors. Um, you just really need the red, black, and white for the Pokeballs, but everything else is entirely up to you. So, grab that stuff. Let's go to the craft table, and we're going to make ourselves a brand new cool Pokeball granny square. I am so excited! For each Pokeball Granny Square, you are going to need four colors. Red, black, and white for the Pokeball. Also white for your edge or your border row. And a background color. So I'm alternating between blue and yellow because I really like that contrast. But you can choose to do it any color you like. You can do it a whole bunch of colors. <laughs> um, you might want to match it to a room that you're making the blanket for. That's entirely up to you. I'm using worsted weight acrylic yarn in a size 4. I'm using a pair of scissors, a yarn needle to weave in my tails, and most importantly, a 5.5 millimeter hook or an I9. You can also use a slightly larger hook, anything up to a 6 or even a 6.5 millimeter will be just fine. Just remember, is, uh, the larger your hook goes, the bigger your square will go. And with a 5.5 millimeter hook, each of my Pokeball squares has worked out to be roughly 6.5 inches squared. Once you've got all that, we can get started. We're going to begin with the middle line of our Pokeball, so you're going to want to grab your black yarn. We're going to begin with a slip knot. And from here, you're going to chain 10. All right, you should have a chain length of 10. I realize this is a little tricky to see because I'm using black, but this is the very simple, very short part of the Pokeball. So you're going to skip the first chain from the hook. So you see that one? Skip it. You're going to identify the second chain from the hook. I know it's difficult to see, but there it is right there. You're going to half double crochet into it. So you wrap your yarn around your hook, put your hook through that second chain, pull up a loop. So you should have three loops on your hook. That's pretty easy to see. Wrap and pull back through all three. That's a half double crochet. Now into every single one of the chains that are left, you're going to half double crochet in each one of them. So half double crochet to the end. At the end of that row, you should have nine half double crochets. And that's it. Grab your scissors, snip your yarn, and fasten off. That is going to be the middle of our Pokeball. You might want to take the opportunity to grab your yarn needle and weave in your ends. Now we're going to add the red part of the ball. So you're going to take your red yarn, make a slip knot, put it on your hook, grab the middle part of your Pokeball, and identify the last stitch or this would be the first half double crochet you made, but just pick an end, doesn't matter whether which side you're on, because we're going to end up working both. And you're going to join with a slip stitch. So just wrap and pull through everything. And you can weave in your tails later, so just tuck them to the back. Now we are going to treble crochet. So you're going to skip across to the middle, or the fifth stitch, so one, two, three, four, five, 
this would be number five right here and we're going to treble crochet into it so find the middle stitch it should be number five you're going to wrap your yarn around your hook twice put your hook through that stitch pick up a loop and you should have four loops on your hook you're going to wrap work the first two wrap work the next two wrap and work the last two that is a treble crochet and it's pretty big you're going to work nine more into this same stitch so wrap twice work into the same stitch that you just put the last one in pick up a loop wrap back through two wrap back through two wrap back through two and you can stand back and tug your work a little bit you want to work 10 red treble crochets into that middle stitch in total all right, we're really packing them in there and working those last few might be a little complicated, but just be patient. You should have 10 treble crochets worked into that center stitch. You're going to identify the last stitch. So the top of the last stitch, this is probably a chain two or a piece of a chain two. Try and find it. I know it's dark. <laughs> and slip stitch to join. And that is the top of our pokeball. Grab your scissors. Snip your yarn, fasten off, and weave in your ends. So now it's time to put the bottom on. Grab your white yarn, make a slip knot, and we're going to do the exact same thing across the bottom. So you're going to join your hook in the very edge stitch. This is either the foundation chain row that you're working or across the top. Like I said, it doesn't matter what side you work because both are going to end up getting the same treatment. Put that little tail to the back. Find the stitch that is directly beneath the one you worked all of your first treble crochets into. So it doesn't, you don't really have to count. You just want to eyeball this. You want to find a piece that looks like it's pretty much directly below. It's going to be a little off, but that's okay because it's going to get hidden by the center locking device. So grab what looks like the middle and work 10 white treble crochets into that same middle stitch. So wrap twice, pick up a loop, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, and work all of them into that same middle stitch. Once you've worked 10 treble crochets into that same middle stitch, Find the bottom end uh, of the edge of your pokeball and just slip stitch to join. Grab your scissors, snip your yarn, fasten off, and weave in your ends. Now we're going to make the locking mechanism of our pokeball. So you want to grab your black yarn again. Just get that out of the way. And we're going to start with a cinch circle. And once you've got your cinch circle, cinch circle made, <laughs> you're going to work 10 single crochets into your cinch circle. So I know we're jumping around through different stitches here. Remember the single, you don't have to do any wrapping before. You just pick up a loop, wrap, and pull through the two loops on your hook. So pick up a loop, wrap, and pull back through the two on your hook. You want ten all together into your cinch circle. Once you have ten in your cinch circle, grab the short tail, give it a nice tight pull, cinch it shut, and you're going to join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet of your cinch circle. So you've made a nice circle. Leave a long tail because you're going to sew this down to your pokeball using this tail. So leave a long tail, fasten off, make sure you pull the right tail through your little loop. Grab your yarn needle and weave the short tail in around the back of your little black circle. 
that's the black part. Now we're going to make the white part, and it's very similar. So we're going to begin with a cinch circle. And into that circle, you're going to work five single crochets. Once you have five, grab the short tail, cinch it shut. And the same thing, you're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of the first single crochet you made. There we go. And fasten off. You also want to leave a long tail on this one because you're going to sew the white circle to the middle of the black circle. And you're going to use that tail. So fasten off, grab your yarn needle, and weave your short tail in around the back of your circle. So now we're going to make the locking mechanism. Grab your black circle, grab your white circle, and thread the white tail up in your yarn needle. Pick the top of both, place them together so that it's the white circle should have some black showing all the way around it. And then you can just pull your needle all the way through to the back and skip over a stitch and come up on the inside of the edge of the stitch of your white circle. So back down through, all the way through to the back, and then come back up through, so you're working through that stitch, and then you can go over top of it and down back through. So it doesn't matter what happens on the back of your, your um, Pokeball locking mechanism, because the whole thing's going to be hidden. <laughs> so just work your way all the way around, sewing the white circle down to the black circle. Once you're done, you can flip it upside down and tie off your yarn with a little knot. It doesn't have to be big. Um, just want to make sure that it's not going to go anywhere. And if it's a bit poofy, that's okay because the ball is going to have a lovely three-dimensional look anyway. So tie it off, snip your yarn, and you're done with that. Now you can thread up your long black yarn in your yarn needle. Grab your Pokeball, place your locking mechanism down in the middle, so you want to cover up that space, right in the middle, hold it in place, and you can just start doing the same thing. So you go all the way through to the back, and come back up on the inside, so if you can see that, it's on the inside of the black edge. And if you don't want it to show through all the way to the back, you can just pick up a little piece of a stitch. And same thing, you want to work through the side of that black piece. And you can do that all the way around too. So, just work your way around, sewing your locking mechanism onto your Pokeball. And then we'll move on to the rest of the granny square. Once you're finished sewing down your locking mechanism, you can take your yarn, pull it all the way through to the back of your Pokeball, and you can weave it in back and forth several times, and that should lock it in place. If you're worried about it because it's slightly slippery yarn, then knot off in a small little area, make a nice tight knot, and then weave in your ends. And that's it for the Pokeball part of our granny square. This, on its own, makes a pretty great applique. So if you wanted to stop right here and attach this to a blanket you already had going on, or a jacket or anything, you could do that too. But let's move on with the rest of the granny square. So now you want to grab your background color. For me, that's going to be blue. You're going to make a slip knot. Take your Pokeball, make sure that you're holding the red part upright, and then turn it sideways. You're going to join your yarn in the side of your black stripe. So you're going to join with a slip knot, just like that. Doesn't have to be super fancy. Chain three. And into that same space that you joined, you're going to work two 
double crochet. So here we are, jumping to another stitch. Double crochet is wrap your yarn once, hook through your space, pick up a loop. You should have three loops on your hook. Wrap and go back through the first pair, and wrap and go back through the last pair. That's a double crochet. Work one more into that same place. And if you've done the granny square with me, you will recognize this shell pattern. So a shell is three double crochets. The chain three counts as a double crochet. You need three to make one shell. We put in a single chain for a spacer. And now you're going to hop over a couple of stitches. So you see all your stitches here. You're going to jump over two, pick the third one, and we're going to work a corner. So you're going to double crochet three times into that same stitch. One, two, three. Chain two, because we're putting in a corner and work another shell into that same stitch. Great! Corner made! Chain one for a spacer. Skip over a couple of stitches, so you want to go skip, skip, find the third. The third should be directly in the middle of the top of your pokeball. And you're going to work a shell, so three double crochets. Chain one for a spacer. Skip two more stitches, find the third. We're going to work another corner. So two shells and a chain two in the middle. There's the second corner made, so it should look something like this so far. You're going to chain one for a spacer. And now you're going to work into the opposite side. So you're going to pick a middle part of that stripe. So that's good right there. And you're going to work a shell or three double crochets into that same stitch. All right. We are half done our foundation granny square row. So we're going to chain one for a spacer. And now we're going to skip two white stitches, pick up the third, and you're going to work a corner. Shell, chain two, shell. Chain one for a spacer, skip two stitches, find the third. That one should be pretty much directly in the bottom, so that's sort of the middle of your, your little white part here, and work a shell into that stitch. Chain one for a spacer, and we're going to work our final corner. So skip two. Um, if you're running out of stitches, just pick what looks like the corner. This does not have to be exact because it's going to get pulled into a square. So pick a stitch and work shell, chain two, shell into it. Once you've got your corner made, put one more chain for a spacer in. Don't forget that last chain. And then you're going to join to the top of your chain three. So I am going to pick up the top of that chain, just like that. Run my, my hook right through it. And join with a slip stitch. And bada boom, bada bing. <laughs> You've just encapsulated your Pokeball in a granny square. Woo, isn't that cool? So we're going to put in one more row of our background color. This is to make it really stand out. You're going to slip stitch across the top of these next two double crochets so that you can get to a chain one space. So just slip stitch across the front. Don't worry, it's not going to show. Slip stitch into that next chain one space. Chain three. And you can now start your granny square pattern all the way around. So finish off that shell by working two more double crochets into it. Remember to chain one for spacers along your sides. When you get to a corner, which is a chain two space, work shell, chain two, shell into it. And you can work the same pattern all the way around, and I will catch you up back at the beginning. Once you get all the way around, remember to chain one for a spacer before you join to the top of that chain three that you began the row with. 
And that's it for the background color. You can slip stitch to fasten off. Cut a little bit of a tail, you don't need a whole lot. You're going to grab your yarn needle and weave this in. And then we'll do our final border. We're putting on our border row now. For me, it's this nice bright white because uh, I like to pull out the white part of the ball. And you're going to grab your white yarn, make a slip knot, and I like to join colors when I'm working rows on a granny square in a corner. So grab a corner, doesn't matter which one, join your yarn with a slip stitch, just like that. Chain three. Complete that shell by working two more double crochets into the corner. And then complete the corner, chain two, and work one more shell into that same corner space. Chain one for a spacer and work that same granny square pattern all the way around for your final row. Remember to chain your last chain as a uh, sort of a spacer stitch before you join with a slip stitch to the top of that chain three. Then you can fasten off. So grab your scissors, snip your yarn, fasten off, grab your yarn needle and weave in all your ends. And that is it for your fabulous Pokeball Granny Square. Now all you have to do is make a whole grippy pile of them and decide how you're going to sew them together. Next you want to lay out all your squares in the manner in which you want to attach them. So I've got a nice 3x4 setup going here and all of my Pokeballs are facing the same way. So the top or the red part is all facing up and I've alternated my blue and yellow colors. I have sewn all of my squares together, so I opted to sew mine together, but you can single crochet them together or attach them however you like. And now that they are all together, all I have to do now is put on a border. And there you have it. I put a half double crochet border on mine. So I've got five rows of half double crochet. That's it. Nothing super fancy. Our borders tutorial will take you through that. So rather than just say doing single crochet, you can substitute in the half double crochet instead. And that's all there is to it. It's super simple. Um, you can just keep adding borders until you've run out of yarn. <laughs> um, and that's it. I hope you have fun making this. It's certainly as much fun as I did. I am absolutely in love with this granny square. <laughs> And I know exactly where I'm going to hang this, too. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for tuning in today on the Jada and Stitches show. We will see you again really, really soon. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome week. Bye, everybody!